All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are here at the Alabama Nature Center, and we are going to talk to you about something really cool. So we've been doing some sneak peeks of some projects that we've been doing here at the Nature Center. So while we've been partially closed, we've been working on a few things, and one of those things is something called a rain garden. And so we actually gave you a little sneak peek probably a couple weeks ago and we asked you if you were doing some gardening and we showed you a picture of a bulldozer in the back of the nature plex and we were digging a huge hole. If anyone remembers or if you saw that post uh, please let us know and if not you should go back and check out that picture because that's where we started with this project and we can also share with you some before pictures from this project um, that we took of this site. So we're going to show you the after project. So this is the final uh, reveal of this project that we've been working on and to share with you today how this works and why we did it and how we came about and what all a rain garden is, we have Miss Tammy here with us today and she's going to talk to us about what a rain garden is and why we built a rain garden and then you will get to see our very own rain garden. So let's see Miss Tammy. Hello guys. Well so why, what is a rain garden and why do we build a rain garden? Well first of all you know one of our primary missions is wildlife conservation. And part of wildlife conservation is habitat, the place where wildlife lives, conservation. Now, there's also some practical landowner reasons to build a rain garden. A rain garden is an area that will collect water and allow it to filter out slowly from rainwater that runs off of surfaces. So, let me give you a couple demonstrations of what that is and why that happens. I have with me some water and I have a couple of tools I'm going to use and if we were going to pretend it was raining and rain hit my roof I'm going to pretend this is a roof here as the water lands on it you see does it go anywhere it is just going everywhere around it and as it rains it runs off that's why we call it runoff the more surfaces you have the more amount of rain and water you have that runs off. You see it all the time into your streets or in parking lots or down driveways. Um, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's not really either. It's just something that happens. But you know that all the water that runs off into your streets goes down storm drains. And once it goes down a storm drain, guess where it goes? It goes right into your creeks, streams, and rivers. So, it becomes part of your fresh water also. Now, when it goes down that way, it's carrying all kinds of things with it. So, it's carrying whatever chemicals are on the ground, it's carrying whatever big things are on the ground. So, what a rain garden does is it gives an opportunity for the water to settle for a bit in a bowl and collect. And then as it drains through the soil nice and slow, the plants will have an opportunity to drink it up and take out some of those chemicals and toxins before it passes out of the rain garden to the surrounding soil and the water tables. Okay, there's a couple things here that we need to look at for our rain garden. Another reason, other than just plain runoff from buildings and surfaces that we build, is maybe soil types. If you have a soil, that is full of clay, look what happens. It doesn't drain very well and water sits on top of it. Now, I'm gonna pour some water into some sand. If we have water on a sandy surface, look what happens. It drains, it goes right through it. So those are some important considerations when we were talking about Oh, when we build our rain garden, what are we going to make our bowl of soil out of? 
Do we need to make it out of clay? Do we need to make it out of sand? Do we need to put in great topsoil for the plants to have nutrients and to grow? So, what we decided to do was, and you can find all this information if you look up rain gardens on the internet, we created a big bowl in the soil. And you will find that most wetland places have clay on the bottom, that's how they hold water. And it just so happens that our bowl that we made in the soil, our big depression, has a mixture of clay and sand in it, and it holds water. And we did a percolation test, which means we took some post hole diggers, we made a hole, we filled it up with water, and to see how fast that water actually drains when it hits the soil. And our water was gone pretty quickly, so it's a pretty decently draining soil. Um, but you want your rain garden water in the bowl to be gone in 12 to 48 hours. That's ideal for it to leave um, and enter into the soil around you. So the goal is to slow it down, give it somewhere to stay, let the plants drink up the things that are in it, and then pass on through into the water table. Let me show you what happens when water comes really fast without a bowl to catch it. You can see my tray of sand here, that's all it is, and the water comes down, what happens? Ooh, we're making a mess. There's a couple of things going on. The water moves, but look what it took with it. It took all the soil with it as well. And look at the place where the water was coming down. Is there any soil left? There is not. So, in order for those plants to have a place to live and grow, to filter the soil, we had to make that level bowl shape. So we'll fill up the bowl with water. Now, I told you we had a couple of soil considerations, so I'm gonna show you what we did. In the bottom of our rain garden, I told you we had a little bit of clay and a little bit of sand. And we can talk about the reasons why all the things happen some other time. Come on out and see us. But clay in the bottom, and that's our liner. So our clay liner is gonna hold the water for a little bit, but we had to mix a little bit of sand in there so that the water could drain through. But we want plants to be happy in our bowl as well, right? So we spent some time and we got some sand and some topsoil, some sand and some topsoil, sand to give it drainage. Any good gardener or farmer can tell you, you need to have drainage and you need to have nutrients in your soil. And we mixed it all up and we made our big bowl of sand and soil. That mixture, was then perfect for us to put a few, few plants in. Let's see what happens. Let's put some water in there and see if it'll drain. So it's slowing down. It's dispersing. It's draining through. But the bottom of our bowl is solid, so what's happening? We're getting a little puddle in the center. So when we decided to plant the plants in our rain garden, these are some considerations we had to take in. The water drains last from the very center. So the plants we put in, where the water is gonna sit the longest, are plants that are used to or can have their feet wet underneath water and not drowned. And then on the sides, we plant in some plants that like water but can do all right if it gets very dry. Because we did not make a wetland, we made a rain garden where water will collect and then disperse. But let me show you some of the plants that we have in here. I wanna to talk to you about one of them. This little plant, you can see we got some rain last night. It came in, it's sitting in water. But one of the plants that we have in our very wet zone of our rain garden is a button bush. 
and this plant has a couple of very nice adaptations to fluctuating water, meaning lots of water and then no water. You have a garden plant that does the same thing. This plant has adventitious roots, which means that it can put roots out from its leaves, it can put roots out from its stem, it can put roots out from other parts of the plant other than the bottom. So if the water stays up for a while, then it can put roots out upper on its stem so that they can still get oxygen and will not drown. That's a pretty neat plant adaptation. It also has floating seeds when the seeds are made that will disperse it amongst the water. But when the water goes down, it'll just spread out, start collecting sunshine, and it still has its roots in the bottom where it will do just fine. Miss Kristen, you want to show them the rain garden, what it looks like now? Yeah, so we have in our wet zone, as you can see, it is holding water. It's nice and soupy. And so underneath is that soil and sand mixture that Miss Tammy told you about. And we have a top layer of mulch and it's just kind of holding the moisture in. The very center, we have some winter berry. All of these are native plants. We have a native azalea. We have some rain lilies. This one had previously bloomed the last rain. Um, we have some Georgia aster. We have some, these are called obedient plants. And we have a St. John's wort. And so we have a lot of ferns. And so we have a lot of really cool wetland plants. We also have over here, also in our wet zone, this is arrowwood. And so a lot of these, these are going to get very large too. And so while there's a lot of space to walk in now, eventually these are gonna get very large and bushy. And as they get larger, they'll be able to suck up more water. And then in our semi-dry area, where it can dry up, we have some Joe Pye weed. We have some bee balm. We have some beautyberry. We have milkweed. We have some asters. We have some more ferns. We have phlox. Some more different types of Joe Pye weed. We have liatris or blazing star. We have goldenrod. So we have lots of things for pollinators. We have things that bloom in the spring, summer, and fall, which is important for pollinators. We have different pollinator host plants. We have all native plants. So we try to think about all of those things when planting. And then we have our dry plants. So we have black-eyed Susans as our, in our dry plants. And we have some purple cauliflower. We have some butterfly action and we have some Stokes Aster. And so we had to consider all of these things as well as the light requirements for the different parts of the rain garden, soil requirements as far as the moisture requirements for the different parts of the garden. And then we wanted to think about things like when it was blooming and make sure that all of our plants were native. So I have a plant here, Kristen. This is called lizard's tail, and this is a plant that grows in wet areas. It spreads, if you look at its roots here on the bottom, I kind of made it naked so you could see it. The roots will spread out um, sideways, so they stay closer to the surface, and new plants will grow and come from it as it gets bigger and older. It also has those little adventitious roots up the stem. Does anybody figure out what vegetable you have in your garden that has those? I bet you know. Um, and we're going to plant it into our rain garden to see how it will do in this very wet zone here. You know, rain gardens help us out. They control erosion, like we showed you. Um, it makes that bowl. And they help us out by filtering out toxicities and different things out of the water before it leaves the system. So they really are good. But what I really love most about them is that rain gardens have the potential to enhance wildlife. 
So we talked about native plants. Well, why are native plants important? Because native insects have adapted or grown over time to eat, feed, and reproduce around native plants. And native wildlife has adapted, grown, um, changed over time to live with native insects and native plants. That, and then you just go right on up the chain. You've got amphibians that can move into your place. In fact, surprise, surprise, we have some already. And we've only been here for a couple of weeks. Amphibians will move in. Um, some of those cool lizards that you, we talked about might be there. In fact, if you turn around, Miss Kristen, and you can see how we tried to slow the water on the way in with these rocks. Well, Miss Holly and I were out here earlier. We have baby lizards and baby skinks on our rocks already. <laughs> and the rocks, their main job is just to slow the water so it comes into our hole so that the plants can thrive and not become washed away into the bowl. That's good. And so you're increasing habitat, whether you do it on a small scale or a large scale, anything we can do to help wildlife survive is a good thing because we live in the same space they do. Just our interactions change things. So if we can change it back for the better, it's a good thing. Very nice. Let's see if we can find those toad eggs. Oh, yeah. We've seen lots of insects, lots of butterflies. There's more back here. Yeah, there's a lot of them. And we don't have to worry about mosquitoes, right? Because our standing water is not going to stand forever. It's going to drain in 12 to 48 hours and be dry all over again. And so go fast, little toads. So, and a lot of this water is coming from the natureplex. So we do have a lot of water that comes off of our gutters. It comes down this ditch. Previously, this ditch was having a lot of erosion and the sediment was coming off and it was eroding down here and it was headed towards the woods but it was picking up a lot of speed and eroding and of course that's heading towards our gum pond which we don't want that sediment going down down the hill into our gum pond um, that's not so great for everything that's down that way so we added rocks to slow it down and to stop the erosion and then by adding this this still takes in a lot of water so I do want to show you we have this basin this will hold a lot of water and we had to dig a huge hole we had to dig 18 inches down which that might not seem like a lot but when you're digging an area this big that's a big hole that's a really big hole and then we had to fill it back up with our sand and soil mixture to a certain height and let me see if I can get you an angle right here so you can see the berm all the way around that holds the water and it sloped downwards and the slope is really important so we have our different zones so we have our dry zone our medium zone or a mesic zone and then our wet zone and then our wet zone goes to here and this is our overflow and so in really big rainstorm events when our bowl is full it comes out to the overflow and down here and fills up another basin and this basin slowly trickles out and doesn't take any sediment with it and then it can just slowly go out and water the trees and it's not making rapids all the way down. Alright, well, we, let's show you one more picture. Ms. Crystal, where can I find these? That. So going online, if you start looking at rain gardens, um, you can find so much information on the internet about how to build a rain garden, all the instructions, all the science behind it, and all the information you could ever want to know just by looking it up. And so this is some of the pictures that I found. This is where the water goes in. This is um, the soil mixture. This is the ponding depth, so this is where the water could fill up to, and then you have your overflow. And you can build rain gardens um, to suit your needs. They can be as big, as small as you like. You just have to do a couple of measurements um, 
to make sure that your site is suitable and make sure that your soil can drain. And so they'll teach you, you can find all that online of how to do that. Um, this is a little informational sheet about how to build a rain garden. They can be really beautiful. You can build it in your yard just to handle the runoff from your gutters. Um, and that's just a really neat way to plant a garden and create habitat and also to deal with that stormwater runoff. And so that's really easy to find that information online. And you can also come out here and you can see our rain garden. And we can tell you some of the things that we learned uh, while building ours. And we can direct you to some other resources if you would like. You can comment on this video and ask us questions about the rain garden if you'd like. We are by no means experts on rain gardens, but uh, we did do a lot of research while making this one. We learned a lot of things. We had a lot of fun doing it. Um, moving all those rocks by hand was a lot of work, but we have an amazing team at the Nature Center, and so we got it all done, and it's beautiful, and we can't wait to watch it grow. And we'll probably be showing you some pictures um, here in the rain garden on social media so we can see what's coming in, what's blooming, um, what critters are coming to visit it, how much water is coming in here. We're going to put a rain gauge uh, in here and so we'll keep you up to date with all the things happening in our rain garden and keep you up to date and if you want to learn more and have any questions please just comment on this video and let us know. And remember to like this video please and pretty please share onto your Facebook page because we want other people to see this video and share it and go like our Facebook page so we can keep making videos like this uh, in the future. Thanks for coming and joining us this Friday and I hope you have a great weekend.